Western and Southern Kentucky. This is WYNT Mountain News at 11. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. Eight years ago today, tornadoes tore through parts of eastern Kentucky. 26 people died, hundreds were injured, and scores of homes and businesses were destroyed. Downtown West Liberty was nearly leveled. WIMT's Dakota Makris went to Morgan County to see for himself how things have changed. Remembering like it was yesterday. It is headed right toward Morgan County. Mayor of West Liberty, Mark Walter, remembers that day all too well. When you get to talking about it, you see pictures, it takes you right to that day. We'll never forget where I was and what we had to go through. Taking action right after the storm passed. Went in immediate mode of, of helping. Um, I helped clean the, uh, the uh, parking lot and the entrances into our uh, local hospital. Businesses, homes, and churches were destroyed that day. West Liberty United Methodist Church was hit. We came over to see what we could do the week after the tornado. Jamie Brunk became the pastor a few months after the storm hit. I came here because of the fact that the church had been destroyed and the parsonage was unusable, unusable uh, and we had the opportunity to kind of start from scratch. How does a new pastor help his grieving congregation? It's by listening carefully. Uh, I wanted to hear their stories. I wanted to know where they were, uh, what had happened. The church was rebuilt, but they still wanted to hold on to memories of the old church. One of the other things they wanted, if possible, was to be able to recreate the windows uh, that were very important in the old church. And eight years later, their recovery is everywhere you look. In Morgan County, Dakota Makris, WYMT, Mountain News. Mayor Walter says they've been blessed to have several businesses rebuild and they welcome everyone to come check out their town now. The deadly tornado outbreak was one of the worst natural disasters in Kentucky's history, but in McGoffin County, where a tornado damaged or destroyed schools, homes, and businesses, no one died. Some still call it a miracle. One woman who lived through it was trapped outside in her car and remembers it vividly. It's sad. Just I was worried about my family and, and my children because I couldn't get a hold of my daughter at the time. She was on the other end of town and just making sure that everybody was okay. Restaurant Row, an area nearly leveled in McGoffin County, is now rebuilt and thriving. Of course, not tracking any severe storms here, but they are tracking some severe storms out into parts of western Kentucky. Yes, the system's going to move into our area here in the next few hours, but that severe threat will weaken as these storms are to head into our area. So right now, looking good. You're seeing some lightning, though, back into parts of western Kentucky, and you're seeing a lot of those watches and warnings out towards Bowling Green all the way to Paducah. See that outline in red? Well, that is a tornado watch that they have until 1 a.m. Central Time. That's 2 o'clock our time. And there's of a nastier storm that just moved through Bowling Green. Now it's severe warned and some more severe thunderstorm warnings back towards Paducah. Of course, they're in that slight risk. Remember, that's a two out of five on the severe weather scale and the rest are really a good portion of central West Kentucky in that marginal risk. One out of five on the severe weather scale. Zooming in closer to home, London is in that Whitley County, parts of Knox, McCreary, Pulaski, Wayne, and a part of Rockcastle County is in that marginal risk. Remember, once again, that's a one out of five on the severe weather scale. So some of those storms could be a little bit strong as it moves into our area, but the rest of us, like I said, it'll continue to weaken as that moves into eastern Kentucky. We'll talk a little bit more about the timing of these storms coming up in a little bit. All right. Thank you, Paige. We put a lot of trust in our pharmacists when we need a prescription, but sometimes mistakes can happen. That includes everything from wrong doses and medication given to the wrong person. This is a look at pharmacy complaints from across Kentucky in the last two years. You can see there were seven complaints in southeastern Kentucky. New at 11, Kristen Kennedy looked into each of those complaints. She shows us some cases where pharmacists mixed up medicine. The complaints range from concerning. The medicine made me so sick all day and still felt weak and nauseous. To chilling. They're going to kill someone if they don't start paying attention. We pulled the paperwork from the Kentucky Board of Pharmacy, and in the last two years, they've received more than 30 complaints of medication errors. 
I now suffer from weakness, fatigue, hot flashes, chest pains, headaches, and daily nausea. It was a busy Friday after work, and I know how that can add to mistake making. That was a mother in Henderson told to give the wrong dose, a double dose of an antibiotic to her toddler for an ear infection. Another child, also in Henderson, ended up in urgent care when the medicine prescribed a single dose was dispensed by the pharmacist at four times the prescribed amount. A patient in Prestonsburg was given a medication intended for someone else. Took almost a month to realize that dangerous mistake. A man in Corbin got his medication unknowingly switched to a sedative. He said he took one dose, started riding his motorcycle, crashed, and got a bad burn on his leg. Well, unfortunately, mistakes happen, uh, and I believe in the pharmacy world that, you know, that that's unfortunate uh, because a simple error, you know, putting the wrong medication in the wrong bottle can have very, very bad, you know, results. The chairman of the Kentucky Pharmacists Association, Chris Paludis. The pharmacists are expected to do more with less help than ever before. He knows firsthand. He helps run CNC Pharmacy in Lexington. Ten years ago, you fill prescriptions, you counsel patients, you help them with over-the-counter stuff. That's what we did. Now we do all that, plus we do flu immunizations. We do hepatitis A immunizations. We have to do, um, a lot of pharmacies do monthly psychiatric injections for patients. Uh, on top of that, the insurance world is getting more and more complicated, so we're spent, our staff is spending more and more time dealing with insurance problems. A lot can happen in between. And that could lead to errors. Correct. We're hearing from the consumers. We're getting complaints from the consumers, but we're not hearing complaints from pharmacists. Is your hope to get those complaints and to find solutions ahead of a, a worse error taking place? I think a lot of pharmacists don't complain officially about it. Maybe they're afraid of retribution. I, I will tell you, I I've been a pharmacist for over 25 years and I don't know, I've never met a pharmacist that, that doesn't get sick to their stomach when they make even the smallest, the smallest error or mistake. Preventing those mistakes may start with caring for the pharmacist. Paluta says his association is creating a pharmacy work environment advisory committee. We're doing that because we do recognize that more and more pharmacists are complaining about their quality of work, their quality of life in the workplace. They're lobbying for an end to pharmacy middlemen called pharmacy benefit management. They're keeping a close eye on the number of students entering the field. They're taking small steps to try and stop big mistakes from hurting their patients. In Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Senate Bill 50 is the bill the Kentucky Pharmacists Association would like to see pass this legislative session. It will allow the Department for Medicaid Services to establish their own outpatient pharmacy benefit program. At last check, the bill passed the Senate and is now in a House committee. As fears about the coronavirus spread, many are wondering what the response will be. While Kentucky has yet to have its first reported case, school districts in eastern Kentucky are preparing. While some have canceled classes this year due to the flu, they are taking their direction from the state. And while they don't know much about the virus yet, they know schools can cause illnesses to spread quickly. It's like it's traveled throughout schools throughout the whole district instead of all at once. I don't know if it's just how the virus, you know, how the flu virus does or what, but, you know, kids are just in contact with each other so, so often in close quarters. You know, I'm, I'm sure that has something to do with it. Leslie County school leaders say they have all the proper cleaning supplies and are having their custodians focus on cleaning all the surfaces they can. Now to Knox County, that's where accused murderer Philip Lee Lewis pleaded guilty in court this morning. Gary Wayne Medlin was killed back in January of last year. Lewis's plea comes after months of claiming he was innocent in the deadly robbery at the A&B Quick Stop in Gray. Gary's mom just hopes that Lewis's jail time is a wake-up call, one that he will not take lightly. That's the only thing, I mean, if he does... That's good because I, I wouldn't want any other family to go through this. 
Lewis will be back in court on April 3rd for his sentencing. The annual Health Provider Education event was hosted at the University of Pikeville today. The event brings healthcare professionals and students together to learn about research and resources for substance use disorder education. Organizers say the partnership between Shaping Our Appalachian Region, Operation Unite, and the University of Pikeville is all about preparing people for a better Appalachia. To help these young people who are going into medicine see how they can be part of the solution uh, when they become those providers and even how they can be part of the solution now as students. Several substance use recovery resources and Narcan training were also provided at the event. Governor Andy Bashir was at that event in Pikeville and made a few other stops in eastern Kentucky today, announcing several new grants. Letcher County was one area receiving funding for new projects. WYMT's Katie Cook highlights what officials plan to do with the money. As Governor Bashir toured eastern Kentucky, we are very excited to have the governor in Letcher County. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in grant money was awarded to Letcher County. We got $42,000 today for Letcher County and that is for bank stabilization for bridge projects. This will help repair roadways damaged by flood water. But what is arguably the most exciting part about the new grants in Letcher County is that Fish Pond Lake Park is getting a makeover. This grant's actually a 50-50 match, so it will add about a $400,000 influx to Fish Pond Park. County officials are planning to build a new visitor center, playground, bathhouse, several new grilling stations, and... One of the other amenities that we're looking to add to the park are tiny houses. Officials hoping the new upgrades promote tourism. I believe it will add an influx of people coming into Letcher County to enjoy our park. And, well, some more fun for families in and around the county. In Letcher County, Katie Cook, WIMT Mountain News. The governor also announced funding for several projects in the city of Whitesburg. You can read much more about Governor Bashir's visit, including hundreds of thousands of dollars for the city of Pikeville, on our website at WIMT.com. Earlier this year, 20 horses were found shot and killed in Floyd County. This afternoon, one of those surviving horses, Knox, got a new forever home. Knox's new owner, Vicki Baumgartner, says she cannot wait to welcome her new addition. She has a 12-acre farm in Taylorsville. Investigators do not know who shot the horses. The reward to find the person or persons responsible is now up to $23,000. Coming up on Mountain News at 11, a dramatic Democratic shakeup on the eve of Super Tuesday. We'll take a look at the state of the presidential race and what's at stake tomorrow. And heavy rain and a few storms are expected overnight. I'll have those details coming up.